Today we're going to talk about the tuning fork, which is very important in our practice. We use our tuning forks extensively, plus of course our audio metrics, and there are times when they don't agree. If they don't agree, it very often is the problem of the audio metrics rather than our tuning fork. Now, th there was a time when tuning forks were used instead of doing audio metric examinations. The audiometer wasn't introduced until the 1920s. They were made possible by the use of the vacuum tube. The first models were large and unreliable, and then the size and the portability improved with transistors and integrated circuits. There was no standardization of the audiometers. Uh, there was no, no national uh, calibrations. The first national calibration was in 1951, uh, and that was the ASA calibration. The first international was 1964, and that would have been the ISO, and then that, that was refined uh, so that we have now the American National uh, St uh, Standardization Institute the ANSI. So prior to the introduction of the audiometers, the doctors used to do a hearing test with their voice and with the tuning fork. And I, I've, I've seen them do it. When I first started in practice, there were a number of doctors doing just that. And they could d do a pretty good audiometric examination using their voice and using the tuning fork. But let's start with some uh, uh, a few bits of information that you have to know. If the patient hears the softest whisper, that means where you just move your lips, then the hearing loss is less than 15 decibels. If they hear a soft whisper, the loss is between 15 and 30 decibels. A soft medium whisper would be 35 to 40. A medium whisper is 50 and a loud whisper is 60. A low voice is 70, a shout is 90. Now let's, let's demonstrate with Ann Williams, one of our audiologists. Let's demonstrate, and you'll be able to hear in my mic, a soft whisper. So Ann, just repeat what I say. Two. Now you probably couldn't hear that on my microphone because I just moved my lips. So that means her hearing loss is less than 15 decibels. Now here is a soft whisper. One. Here is a soft medium whisper. One. One. Here is a medium whisper. One. One. Here is a loud whisper. Seven. Seven. Here is a low voice. Four. Four. And here is a loud voice. Seven. Seven. Now once you do that, you, you've pretty well you've pretty well got <laughs> the hearing localized. Now if, of course, it's you got one good ear and one bad ear, then you've got to use your masker. Now, this is the portable masker that we use in the office. Uh, you can use your audiometer for the same thing. Now, if Ann had uh, bad hearing in the right ear and good hearing in the left ear, we would have to mask out the left ear. We would use white noise. So I would go to white noise on my audiometer, and I would, always, I would always put it on maximum, 110 decibels. So let's say that we have a hearing loss in the right ear with good hearing in the left ear. Now I've got to mask out the good left ear. The masking you can see is pretty loud. So let's try it again. Now, the masking, even this loud of masking, and this is at 110 decibels, even this level should not interfere with the hearing in her good ear. Bring it in gradually, because it's pretty loud for the patient. Two. Two. One. One. Four. Four. Three. So you can see that it's not going to interfere with her, with her good ear. Now let's turn it off for just a minute. And let's go to the, to the technical use of the tuning fork. It's kind of fun when we have sometimes uh, uh, folks come through our office and I will ask them to do tuning forks. I'll say, well, let's go ahead and start your tuning forks. And they'll kind of go like this. They must kill themselves on that elbow. 
and they'll they'll say, "Tell me where you hear it," and they'll hold it somewhere out here. No, they won't use their hand. They'll hold it somewhere out here, and then they'll go like this. Very bad. You've got to do your tuning forks the same way every time. First of all, use your knee. And if you're examining a woman, my knees are on one side or the other. If you're examining a man, they can have her, his knees between your knees. So here we are side by side with our knees. Let, let's assume that Anne has a uh, uh, 30 decibel loss in the right ear by air and 10 by bone, so she has a very or 15 by bone. She has a very moderate conductive loss in the, in the right ear. So let's test her right ear. Now, I've got my hand on her head, so I'm always going to control the same way. And when I, when I put this, when I, when I put it beside the, the head on the right side, it, you see it's perpendicular to the ear. Correction, let's call it parallel with the ear. It's not like this, it's like this. When I go to the back of the ear, I'm going to have my hand on her head. A surgeon doesn't operate with his hands flapping around. He always has steadies his hand on the patient's head. Now, remember, remember that Anne, Anne has a 30 decibel loss by air and 15 by bone. Is it louder, front or back? Front. It's louder in the front. So our Rene test is not picking up a 15 decibel loss or 15 decibel gap. Now, and which ear, which ear here is this? Right. All right. It goes to the right ear. Now notice, once again, I had my hand on her head, just like I had it here. And notice on this, when I'm testing the forehead, I'm pulsing it. Now that's the way to do the tuning forks. And again, look how I'm supporting the tuning fork, I've got my finger on her forehead. The first thing that shows us is that the Weber is more sensitive than the Rene. Although she's got a 15 decibel airbone gap, the Rene did not pick it up. The Weber did. So the Weber is the more sensitive of the two tests. Let, let's assume that you've got a uh, 50 decibel sensory neural loss in the right ear with good hearing in the left ear. Here's my same posture. Is it louder front or back? Back. Front right. or back? Back, but in the left. But she thinks she's hearing it in her left ear, OK? Now let's mask out the left ear. Now here I'm going to go to white noise. I'm going to go to white noise this time. And let's put the masking in the left ear. Is it louder front? or back? Front or back? Front. It's louder in the front. Now, we know that we have a sensory neural loss. We've masked out the good ear. Now let's see how much the loss is. Repeat what I say. Again, I'm going to mask her good ear. Six. One. One. So that's a medium whisper, and that's what we called that's what we call the 50 decibel loss. Uh, there are many patients on which I'll map out that audiogram and almost draw it exactly. I don't think quite as good as the, the men who use the tuning forks exclusively, but it's of great benefit. And I mark that on the chart before the audiologist does a test, so they know where to start testing. It saves a lot of time that way. And again, it'll tell us if there's something wrong. For example, you can have a very soft cartilage in the ear canal. So when you do your audiometrics, the canal collapses. It'll look like a conductive loss. But if my tuning forks have shown that it's not a conductive loss, then the audiologist will check again and probably uh, put in a, a And uh, there were patients, uh, now there'll be some patients, when the audiologists test them, they'll have a conductive loss. They'll look at my test, which showed no conductive loss. So they'll figure out for themselves, this is probably soft cartilage. They'll put an insert in the ear and prevent the, the soft cartilage from the collapsing the canal, and then they'll get the sensory neural hearing loss. 
So I, I hope that, that uh, um, you'll all use your tuning forks uh, and, and again, two hands, one hand on the patient's head to steady it, the other hand using the tuning fork and do them the same way every time. That first, in the first test, we're about an inch from the ear. And of course, you, you pulse. Now there's one more thing I'd like to talk about. There will be patients who will not have any hearing by air and not have any hearing by bone. Nothing. But if you will, and is this very loud to you? Exceptionally, no. Not exceptionally. Show me your teeth. How about that? It's louder. It's much louder. If you test the teeth, there's about a, a reserve of 11 decibels at two at at 500, where the, the teeth are, will be louder than testing on the mastoid. So in the totally deaf patient, they may hear nothing by air, nothing by bone, but when you put the tuning fork, the 512, on their teeth, they'll hear it. So that's a good test to use when you've got what you think is a deaf patient. Uh, Lenny, uh, I want to make one correction. Uh, when I was talking about masking, I. I used uh, white noise masking with my tuning forks, and of course I should have said narrow band masking, so let's change that to narrow band. <laughs>